Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 34 of my tracksuit to the top series here with Lewis FC uh, in the Skybet League 2. Today, I would have for you guys normally the end of season live com. however, I made a bit of a mistake. Um, I recorded the last episode, the last game of the season, and my microphone wasn't plugged in, and that's the first time that's happened ever in like over 400 videos that I've ever recorded. And the issue with doing FM videos is post commentaries, at least when something's recorded live initially, just isn't the same. Fortunately, the last game of the season wasn't a nail bite. The last game wasn't a massive excitement. But to make up for it today, to wrap up this season, I'm going to be talking about the club, kind of giving you guys a full recap, I guess, of the squad, who we've got, what's been happening, what is happening, uh, and all that good stuff. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this. So anyway, I guess we should start by covering our results since the Plymouth game. Um, as I mentioned, the last game of the season didn't have any real significance, which is kind of fortunate in a way, because if it had been a belter, I would have been annoyed. But actually, after the Plymouth game last episode, everything went quite south. We drew and lost a load. Fortunately, at the end, we did win out, and we won our last two games of the season, which was nice. Uh, the one that you missed was the Hartlepool game. We had already won the league by this point, spoilers. We won the league. That was I kind of feel like that was on the cards anyway last episode. If you watched last episode, you'll know how far clear we were. But these draws and defeats made it a little bit tighter than perhaps it needed to be. Looking at the league table, if we just have a look, you can see we won the league by five points in the end. It was still a very good, comfortable league win. Um, and yeah, it was very good. I'm not going to dwell too much on the fixtures that you missed because they don't really hold that much significance in, in terms of the future of the club. But anyway, looking at our overall kind of stats here from the league, uh, player-wise, you can see Alex Samuel did get the top goal scorer award. The Welsh international has been fantastic for us. 35 goals and 15 assists in 44 games. Easily player of the year in this league. You can see, looking at it, he never actually made another appearance after he scored a hat-trick against Luxembourg, which is a little bit unfortunate and a bit unfair, I think, to give a player... Uh, an international cap, he scores a hat-trick and then you don't let him play ever again. But that could well be on the cards for him. So that's disappointing for him. Uh, but the other players who've really stood out this year, first one is Cameron Stewart out on the right-hand side. He's been a fantastic winger for us. Obviously joined us on a free. You can see he's played 46 games, which I think is pretty much every game this year after he joined the club because he didn't join us right at the start of the season. But in that time, 14 goals and 11 assists is really impressive. And on the other side, Kenji getting 15 assists, getting the second highest amount of assists in the league. And he's played 41 games of 13 goals and 15 assists. So he also contributed a lot to the squad. And between Samuel, Stewart and Kenji, um, they really did work this year. Looking at the player stats in terms of the league table, just some other little stats. Craig Mullen, player with the most wins, our goalkeeper. He's improved a lot this year. Uh, again, a very solid year. Not the best year for him in terms of his average ratings, but... He was called upon and he made some big saves for us when it mattered. Uh, other players, Lewis Thompson, with the third largest distance covered. No idea if that should be impressive or not, but he's done that as our kind of uh, main centre mid this year. He's just run and run and run and he makes his way onto the leaderboards there. Looking at the team stats, you can see here these are all the kind of, what would you call it, the... the um, the more current ones. The only one that we really appear on is the goals scored, which is still pretty decent. But anyway, looking at our average attendance, you can see here, second lowest average attendance in the league of 1,665, of course. We moved back into our stadium halfway through the year, so half a year not playing at our own stadium probably hurt the attendance as a little bit. Um, you can see here that we're in an all-seater stadium, which is... Um, currently reduced because it's been expanded again. Uh, you guys might have caught a glimpse here of the fact that we're currently under a transfer embargo due to breach of financial <laughs> regulations. Yeah, um, I think that's because of how much we've lost this year. Even though we've sold players for massive profit, the fact that th this month we've lost five, well, 1.5 million. I'm not sure how we've lost that much. Actually, I do know how we've lost that much. If I show you the expenditure um, breakdown, um, for this month, ground maintenance, because we wanted to add some more seats, we spent £1.8 million on seats, and that sort of botched our finances. I'm hoping that won't be an issue into next year, because we've still got, if I just show you really quick, we've still got a few clauses in our favour. Ben Bacon is still getting us a little bit of money each month. Matthew Lewis, we've still got a little bit of money left for this month, and um, obviously we get another 140 k from the Joe Robinson sale too, so... Um, I'm hoping that isn't going to be a long-term issue. We have got players we could potentially sell if it got to a really dire situation. 
But uh, as I mentioned, I think that's largely just down to the stadium expansion kind of botching that. If we had to make some sales, though, as I said, there's certainly some places we can do that. Anyway, looking at average attendance by percentage capacity, we're actually up there. 37% is a still a, not a great amount, but for a club of our size that's rapidly growing, that's obviously expanded our stadium this year, that's not too bad. Average possession, sick fires team, not an incredible record, really. 50.89 is not that great. Um, in terms of other stuff that's actually of real kind of interest, I guess, uh, salary per year, third highest paid team in the league behind Luton and Notts County, but we won the league, so I'm not too worried about that. We were always going to have to invest in the squad, obviously, the three big sales over the last two or three years in Robinson, Bacon and Matthew Lewis have really contributed to allow me to have that kind of wage a year. Uh, and then looking at stadium sellouts, no one sold out their stadium ever. So we finished joint first. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what you need to know on that front. Uh, in terms of, is there any other useful stats? Not really. In terms of our actual squad performances for the year then. So our squad's actually gone down in size a lot during the year. Obviously, we've let go of a few players, let players go out on freeze. And the, the squad's, squad certainly got condensed down. We do have a little bit of a weakness in the defensive departments. So that's something I would like to work on. Um, the other areas I'd really like to see us improve is kind of maybe one or two really kind of standout midfielders or attackers. Um, parts of me actually want us to switch back to the 442 system that we used right at the start of this save, um, which would be this 442. I, I, I think that this might be the way to go, which would involve us getting a new striker potentially, but I've got a few on my list of potential transfers but that's kind of where I see us going over the summer to a little bit more of a conservative formation particularly going up into league one I kind of feel like playing the system we've played before could leave us a little bit short in midfield if we just play the three center mids I feel as if in two wider midfielders will give ourselves a little bit more coverage there but anyway look at the actual squad performances play with the most appearances was Craig Mullen in goal with 50 appearances for the year and in terms of average ratings Alex Samuel, perhaps the obvious player there with a really high average rating, perhaps a somewhat surprising one in second, Liam Walsh, the central midfielder. He's performed particularly well in the cup competitions. As you can see in two cup games, he got an 8.1 rating. In the league, he's done okay for us. Nine assists and five goals is a good contribution, but it's not kind of standout, I guess. Other players, Stuart, I already touched upon. Borthwick Jackson had another really good year. I say another really good year. This has been his first year at the club, but a really good year for us. Uh, considering that last year, he was on loan in League One, didn't get much of a chance and he came to us on a free. He's proved to be a really good signing. Not contributing much in terms of goals or set or assists but he is a centre-back and a 7.17 average rating for a centre-back is mighty, mighty impressive. I've already talked a little bit about Kenji. Brandon Barker had a good season when he was called upon. He didn't play so much in the second half of the year and he does want to move on which is fair enough because he hasn't got as much first-team football as I thought he might. During his 27 games, though, he did get 6 goals and 7 in assists, so that's not too bad. Also worth noting that 16 of those 27 appearances were on off the bench. He really was a useful sub to have, particularly with his amazing pace that he just has and his acceleration. It meant that going on off the bench out wide, he was able just to terrorise defenders in the latter stages of games. So those are some of the big performers. If you look at the goals... They kind of come from the three players I already touched upon. But Jake Heskiff's contributed a few. Eight goals and nine assists for him this year in the league. And uh, 41 appearances. I'm mean, A lot of appearances off the bench. But really pleased to see this guy remain an integral part of our first team this year. Whether or not he'll be capable and within my plans for next year is yet to be seen. Just because League One is a big step up from kind of where Heskiff's level's at right now in my eyes. I mean, he's a good League Two player, don't get me wrong. But his poor consistency, somewhat susceptibility to injuries, and also just, I guess, his lack of... Um, what's the word? A la lack of something. I can't think what it's a lack of. Just a lack of quality, I guess. No no disrespect, Jake, but you've... I don't think you're a League One player for me. And, and it pains me to say that because you've been a loyal servant to the club, but it's just a, a fact. Uh, Sweeney's also done well this year. I've not talked about Sweeney. I think the other players up there um, on the goals front I have talked about. The centre-back Sweeney, who's got five goals, which isn't too bad, and four man of the matches. He's got some big goals for us this year. You can see he played all but one game, and I'm pretty sure that one game he missed was because he was suspended due to five yellow cards. But a 7.16 rate for him. He's done really well at centre-back. A player who I'm very likely to keep in the first team this year. Lewis Thompson as well. I already talked about him a little bit because of how far he's run, but he's contributed a lot. He's been playing a little bit more of a defensive role this year than he has in previous years, but he still chipped in with goals and assists. 
which is pretty pleasing. Talking about assists, just looking at the top players here, you can see Kenji, Samuel and Stewart right up there. Walsh, Heskiff and Barker and Thompson, all the usual candidates there. A player who I've not talked about in a little while, Marcus Barnes, a player who came in at the start of last year when we were in the Vanarama conference. Unfortunately, he's just not got the quality of a League 2 player and that kind of reflected in the fact that he played 23 appearances. Granted, 17 were on off the bench, but in that time, only four goals and... Uh, oh, sorry four assists and two goals and a 6.83 average rate and obviously not giving him much time to have a massive impact on the game but he's just not performed and another player who it pains me to say just isn't in my plans for this coming year uh, other players who have done pretty well Niall Keown came in at the start of this year on a free uh, he's done okay nothing special there's a few players here who I don't want to say they're dead wood because that's really harsh but they're players who won't be in the first team next year and I'm very adamant I need to replace Malaba's played well but he's not been stand out again and he's been a good player for us for the last two years but he just he just doesn't have that x factor he doesn't have the league one title pushing quality that i'm going to want from my players but anyway that's a bit of a wrap up in terms of the squad there's a few other players here i've not really talked about i'm just thinking if there's anyone really worth giving a moment um to kind of uh talk about i guess shibola um a player who brought, came in last year. He was unhappy at the start of the year, so I dropped him. He's a little bit happier now, and he wants to commit his future to the club, but I don't want to commit to him. Um, he stirred up a bit of trouble in the changing room at the start of this year, and he's just not that great anymore, so I'm not interested. He, he's he's double-crossed me. I'm making a hard stand. And the other player probably worth talking about is Ryan Seager, who just didn't make the step up this year. I had better players to play in his place and as a result he just didn't get an opportunity to shine and his contract's up at the end of the year and um, I think that's going to be the last we see of him unfortunately. But that's a bit about our squad. In terms of a few transfer ideas I have going on because you know I talked a little bit about how I'm keeping an eye out on players. If we look at my shortlist here, it's a shortlist of a few of the players I'm particularly interested in signing. The big ones are all actually Liverpool players out on loan just because I know them quite well. Big one here, Jerome Sinclair, a player who I thoroughly scouted in anticipation of being able to approach to sign him at the end of his contract. He's probably my player that I want to sign the most out of all the players I've identified, just because, as I mentioned, I want to switch to two up front, and I think his pace and just his overall ability would absolutely tear teams apart in League One. And also his wages are fairly low at the moment. He's only on... Um, Let's check. I'm pretty sure he's only on like seven, yeah, seven hundred and fifty pounds a week at Liverpool. So that's a very realistic one, I think. Um, we have here Shea Ojo, another player who would be a very good addition. Um, he's played this year in League One, but he and he's played a lot of games, and he's not really shone for York. But then York in themselves, I don't think, have done that great. Yeah, they finished rock bottom, so perhaps that's an unfair reflection on him, but he looks like a very good centre mid for this level, and again, a player who's available at the end of a at the year on a free. Uh, We've also got Jordan Rossiter, who's available. Might want to go in for him, but I think we're going to struggle to get him, if I'm honest, because I already know of some of the clubs who have been monitoring the situation. that It isn't showing them here because they've gone cold. The trail's gone cold on him at the moment, but a player who we might you know, keep an eye out on. There's a few other players who are maybes here. If I was to go on my short list... Um, the, there's a lot of players here from like over a long period of time, if I'm honest. It's probably not the best reflection of some of the players I'm interested in. But there's a bit of variety here of players that might be of use to me. Um, I, I certainly have some plans for um, next year, put it that way. Um, Matthew Lewis here, I've not got him fully scouted anymore, but of course he went to Newcastle a few years ago. This year he had a really, I was about to say a really poor year. He definitely stepped up his game towards the end of the season. You guys might remember he had like, two or three goals I think in his first 10 or so appearances so he certainly picked up but still not great for him considering how good he was for us um, but yeah that's it in terms of transfers I think as I mentioned I'm probably going to switch to two up front if I can uh, I did mention about potentially selling players if I just show the values uh, Sweeney is worth a fair bit now Thompson's worth a few, fair bit Alex Samuel I'm a bit worried teams might come in for him because of how well he's done. I don't know if any no teams are interested at the moment, but I just have a horrible feeling there might be a few clubs who try and prime away from us. I need to keep him at all costs, really. He's got a contract for the next four years, which we made him sign at the start of the year, basically a four-and-a-half-year extension to his contract to take him right the way through till 2022. But there is a little bit of a worry, perhaps, that if a big team came in with a big offer, I might have to accept it. 
Uh, in the reserve team, you guys might remember I picked up a few Ivory Coast players. If I just show you the players here, there's actually three of them. Unfortunately, Diallo's contract runs out at the end of this year, the left back. And I didn't realise this, but whenever I offer him a new contract, because he can't get a work permit, he can't extend his contract. So we're going to lose him at the end of the year, which is really annoying because he's not a bad player. And he'd actually probably be useful and he has really good potential. But unfortunately, he can't get his work permit. So I don't know what we're going to do about him. Um, because of that, Eric Yubu, who, who still can't get a work permit, mate, I applied for him fairly recently. Um, he he can't get a work permit. His contract runs out at the end of next year. So we might offer him out, see if anyone bites. I'm actually quite hopeful that we could get some good money for these guys because they're good Premier League players, potentially. You know, we've, we've basically snapped them up from the Ivory Coast just because of the fact they're in the under-21 squad and available for nothing. And they have some very good potential, and it's difficult to tell because no one's shown an interest in them. But I think think, and hope these players might be worse than, particularly Pierre Cisse, who's improved this year. But again, I couldn't get a work permit. I applied for one a few weeks ago, and he still hasn't got it. And this guy's very good. This guy's like, if we just look at that, he's very good. He'd be in my first team at the moment. Um, and he's got a leading Premier League potential. But I can't do anything with him. And he's a player who I might have to sell. Um, I have no idea, again, how much we might get from him. Apparently he's got injury proneness. So, you know, worth noting that. But good consistency and relishes big matches. But I can't extend his contract. And it's annoying me. Because I would like to keep him. But we might sell. And um, I have no idea how much these guys would go for. Their values are fairly low. But because of their potential, as you guys saw, with stuff like the Robinson deal. Um, I guess Matthew Lewis and Ben Bacon as well. Um, I don't know if this is just a thing with FM15. But it seems like teams, particularly in bigger leagues, are a lot more willing to pay big money for players with high potential. Even if their current ability isn't that great. So we might look to capitalise on that potentially. But looking at the score as a whole, it has some good balance at the moment. There's certainly some changes going to be needed, and as I mentioned, a few key players need to come in. Uh, but things are looking good there. In terms of what's going on with me as a manager, uh, as you can see, I don't let do any of my press conferences. But in terms of everything else, things are looking fairly good. My loyalty to players could be better, but because of the way we've rocketed through the leagues, that's obviously dropped to 40%. But everything else has improved quite considerably. Um, if we look at my information page, you can see here, I'm currently studying for my National C license. It's kind of something that actually slipped my mind was that I needed to get my coaching qualifications. That's, of course, a new feature this year. If you want to do it yourself, you go to the My Profile page uh, or My Profile tab, I believe, and then there's request to go on a coaching course and the, the club are funding that, so that's good. Looking at my club history, just so you guys can see it here, uh, we've been obviously at Lewis for our entire managerial career. Um, we've been here for... 1,402 days which is pretty impressive and in that time 6 awards total value of players sold 7 million pounds total value of players bought 45k granted I've bought 69 players most of which have been on freeze which really is the secret to lower league football if I'm not well, it's not even a secret if you're playing in the lower leagues in football manager look at the free transfers particularly in England I kind of feel like I've shown that with the um Premier League players who get released, the trainees. You, there's some great players to pick up for in the lower leagues. Um, but as you can see, 69 players bought, 7 players sold, and a lot of players released in that time. Been a pretty brutal kind of reign, I guess, in charge. Looking at our actual stats, you can see here, 208 games played, 483 goals is incredible. More than 2 goals a game. Um, in that time, uh, 119 games won. That's a win percentage of 57%. Uh, and our goal difference at the moment is um, 207 positive, which is impressive. And obviously in this time so far, three league wins for promotion. So things are looking pretty rosy. If we just look at our club overview here, obviously uh, it doesn't show it yet because we've not got to the end of the season, but we have been promoted again. If I show you the general tab, you can see here, obviously favourite personnel were there. Muggeridge is there, but of course... Um, his contract runs out at the end of the year and I'm probably going to let him go just because he isn't good enough. Barnes as well. A few of the players just aren't good enough for the favourite personnel, which hurts. Um, looking at the club value, 1.2 million, which is really good. Uh, Chairman loves the club. Of course he does. Why wouldn't he? Um, average season ticket price, £353. We've almost doubled our season ticket holders since I've been in charge. It's now at 372 which is nice. If we look at our overall facilities, obviously the, the dripping pan is currently being expanded again. I think it's been expanded to either four, it might be 5,000. 
I think it's get come just shy of 5,000. As you can see, a 1,000 seats being added, which is really good stuff for the um, Dripping Pan Ass Stadium. If we look at um, our youth facilities, basic junior coaching, basic youth recruitment, poor youth facilities and adequate training facilities, that's something perhaps to work on in the coming years if possible. Um, if we look at the board page, what do, what do they think of us? We're untouchable at the moment. You can see we have done work to improve the facilities. You can see here actually the youth facilities are currently in the process of being upgraded um if we look at the confidence here job status is low just because i'm not on a massive wage but that's kind of just how it is uh, elsewhere great club stature 100 percent on wages i guess 100 percent on squad harmony really keeping the players happy obviously we won the league which has blown the um board out of the water and they absolutely love the sale of ben bacon they think 2.2 million pounds was a fantastic deal and i'm inclined to agree but anyway, that's going to wrap things up here, guys. As I said but this right at the start, sorry for the fact there is another game this episode. It's just the first time ever my microphone's been unplugged, I think. Um, and unfortunately, it was uh, the end of the season game. But hopefully you guys don't mind. Hopefully this kind of made up for it, really giving you a full um, look at the squad and the club. As you can see, everyone's happy with training. That's a rarity in FM, and someone's going to ask about the coaches. So here they are in all their glory. Maybe I'll talk about them in an episode or two's time. But anyway, that's going to wrap things up from me, guys. Thank you for watching, as always. If you have enjoyed this video, smash the like button. Um, let me know what you make of this series. Obviously, this marks the end of the fourth season. Really good progress. Next episode will be episode 35, and it kind of marks a new era, I think. I kind of feel like things start to get tricky from kind of league one up so hopefully we can make some good acquisitions to our side of course the only way to find out how we get on in the preseason will be to tune in next time so hopefully i'll see you guys then but anyway that's going to wrap things up from me rambling now at the end i need to shut up you guys want to go and watch other videos so i will talk to you guys in a bit it is me jack and i'm out